Welcome everyone to one more session in data structures and algorithms tutorial series. In this particular session, we are going to learn about abstract data type in data structure. So if you want more such videos from Edignite NGO, please like, share and subscribe to the Edignite NGO channel. So what is abstract data type or what is actually abstract over here? Okay. So let us see what is abstract. If you have learned any object oriented programming language, okay, let us say Java, then you may know the meaning of abstract. Okay, but over here, let, let me just say the meaning of abstract is hidden. Okay, the meaning of abstract is hidden. So something which is abstract is hidden. Okay, so suppose for example, for example, if you have a cell phone, okay, if you have a cell phone then you do several things on your cell phone okay you call to people you message okay you capture photos you run several applications but over here in doing so you don't know what is going on inside the cell phone what are the processes going on at the we can say at the back end okay so that is known as abstraction okay hiding of the things okay that is known as hiding things okay suppose you store something hiding things okay suppose uh, you store something in your uh, you, you save some a file in your in your device okay so do you know how that file is saved uh, basically in the memory it is saved in the form of zeros and ones okay series of zeros and ones e even if it is an image it is stored in form of zeros and ones okay so that but that thing that thing is abstract that is not shown to you okay so that is the meaning of abstract data type okay ADT abstract abstract data type that is the meaning of abstract data type which has two things okay which has two things first it has minimum functionalities okay minimum functionalities or minimum values and then it has some of the operations okay well, some of the operations that it can do okay so it has some minimum functionalities and some operations that it can perform okay so let us say that it has a minimal functionality okay let us say values or minimal functionality of of a phone of uh, of of a phone can be minimum functionality of a phone can can be the the okay the hardware okay so minimum we we require a ram we require an sd card okay then we require a processor okay so let me just write a processor and several things okay so we require several things so these are the minimum functionalities and what are the operations operations in operations they include it should be able to call it should be able to message okay it should be able to capture pictures it should be able to capture pictures okay and so on so we have minimum functionalities and operations in our uh, abstract data type so this was about phone now let us come to real life okay suppose we want to build our own abstract data type okay we want to build our own abstract data type that is an array okay that is an array or let us say array list here here it is not the array that we use in programming language okay it is the data type that is pre-built okay it is the array or array list or simply list okay or simply list they aren't included they aren't included in our into our programming languages but we are building it okay we are building this array okay so what should the array have okay what should our own abstract data type have it should have some minimum functionalities okay and it should have some operations or let us say methods okay so let us talk about minimum functionalities okay so there are uh, there are two like two minimum functionalities it should have okay so it should it can set the value okay it can get the value it should have a getter at i and a setter at i so this is the minimum thing required for an array okay we cannot uh, we cannot create without both of these functionalities it should be able to set an element and get an element from an array okay 
now let us talk about operations okay so the so operations can be said there can be several operations okay here in minimum functionalities we can also add length l e n g t h length okay so we can add length okay so we, there are several things we can add and in operations also we can add several things okay so first thing first thing that that we can add in our uh, our operations uh, operations is the minimum okay finding finding the the minimum value so let us uh, let us write minimum maximum okay min max so that will be function or operation we can have minimum value from all the elements of an array then maximum of all the elements okay then we can have length okay length of an array okay then we can uh, we can have an append append operation that will append to the array okay so we will have an append operation that will uh, append to the array and now let us talk about let us talk about some arrays okay so if we want our array to be dynamic okay there are two types of arrays one is static okay one is static let me write let me just let me just write over here types types of array okay one is static one is static whose size okay whose size cannot be changed okay size cannot be changed whose size cannot be changed okay and we have a dynamic array okay so let me write over here dynamic dynamic okay whose size can be changed so whose size can be changed okay whose size can be changed so we have these two arrays over here okay and here if the static in static array size cannot be changed okay but in case of of dynamic array size can be changed okay so we can also have over here we can we can also have that we want a minimum functionality of our array should be dynamic okay minimum functionality of array should be it it should be dynamic okay it must be dynamic so this way we can have several of minimum functionalities and several operations so this was about array okay this whole thing was about uh, abstract data type okay our own abstract here we have created our own abstract data type okay we have defined the minimum functionalities and operations of our own abstract data type and this is also known as blueprint okay this is also known as blueprint okay i will just write b dot p over here okay this is known as blueprint on this on this particular basis we will create okay we will code our array we will build our array so as, as we, we are building our array on basis of this map this is known as blueprint of abstract uh, of our own data type okay so that was about creating an array but why on earth someone would create an array why on earth someone would create an array if it is already present inside our code okay but there are several limitations of of array as it cannot be the array cannot be static okay sorry i mean dynamic okay so let us see let us see about arrays okay arrays let us see about arrays in any programming language let us say about arrays in c okay and uh, how the memory is allocated okay so here we are going to see the memory allocation okay memory allocation so over here over here in if, if we have arrays okay if we have an array let us say that we want an array we are initializing an array of length 5 we are initializing an array of length 5 then it will have uh, fixed size okay now sixth element cannot be added to this array okay 
why it cannot be added because each element of array okay elements of array are arranged in a sequential manner in memory okay so suppose the array is an integer array okay that is it will store integer data type this particular array so suppose that each integer is having it store takes four bytes value okay uh, value equivalent to four bytes and base address okay base address address of this element starts from four okay it starts from four so here for second it will start from eight then it will start from 12 then it will start from 16 then it will start from 20 and then it will uh, then the next address the next address will start from 24 okay the next address will start from 24 so when we declare this array this much memory is already allocated to our array okay and it may happen it may happen that all the addresses following 20 okay all the addresses following 20 are allocated to some they are allocated to some other program okay they are allocated to some other program or some other variable in the same our same c program okay or some other some other variable okay so during the run time we cannot change it okay if we try to change it if this has been already allocated okay this memory has already been allocated and we are demanding uh, we are demanding this block of memory that has already been allocated to something okay it may or may not be allocated so to prevent this arrays okay arrays in a programming language are always static okay now you you'll say that anyhow we want to add okay over here we have one okay over here we have two we have three here we have four and here we have five we want to add an element over here anyhow okay so what can be done okay so what can be done is you initialize this as a okay then you create another array okay named b where you need where you will create okay where you will have length as 6 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and you will copy all the things over here okay you will you will copy all the elements over here you will copy all the elements over here so 1 2 3 4 5 and then you will add the sixth element so this is the only way this is the only way that you can do to increase size of an array okay you cannot increase the size of as arrays are static okay so this is one bigger biggest problem another problem over here in our arrays lies in in deleting an element okay so suppose we have one two three four and five okay and suppose i want to delete four how can i do it I have to shift all the elements, all the elements succeeding four by one, okay, by one. So I, I, I need to shift all the elements. I need to shift this element over here, this element over here and so on. And this pro process is very tedious job, okay. So it takes, it uh, it's time complexity, I think it's O n, O of n, big O of n, okay. Now, uh, this is also a limitation that if we want to insert an element in between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and let us say it has 6 values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this is empty okay and we want to add 3.5 over here then what we need to do we need to create a similar empty array okay first we need to create 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 we need to create similar empty array we need to copy all the things over here okay we need to copy this and this over here and then then add 3.5 in between so first we need to add 1 2 3 then add 3.5 and then copy 4 and 5 so this is also a very tedious job okay which is very much time taking time increases as input increases so here is also a problem but so so these all are limitations of an array so why are we using it why are we using it because because the time complexity time complexity to access an element to access to access an element to access an element is big o of 1 okay you will say how is it big o of 1 
then i will give you the same example uh, suppose that we have an array of five elements okay where it starts from one two three four five okay then it goes four eight okay four eight twelve sixteen twenty and twenty four okay now we know the base address okay if we when we declare the array it only only the base address the system knows only the base address and the length of array okay now suppose we want to find this is the index of a you know index uh, if you don't know index of the array starts from zero so zero one two three one there is a specific reason why uh, index starts from zero okay so three four okay zero one two three four and i want to find element okay element at third index what i will do is i will have four as base address okay then i will write four into this will be the size of pipes and this will be the index okay so it will be equal to 12 so this is our base address okay this is our base address then this is the size okay this is the size and this is the index okay this is the index so this is the base address this is size and this is index okay so what is the formula what is the formula to find uh, address of an element at a particular index okay now the address has been found out address of the element has been found out now it can it can easily say that give me the element at 12th index okay 12 address number 12 so the address of an element in an array will be equal to base address base address base address plus plus size size into index okay size into index so over here if um, if the array okay if the array is of 10 elements still it will take k amount of time because uh, it just needs to give the index over here okay it just needs to perform some okay constant operations if it is of 100 then also it will take k amount of time it will, if it is of 10,000 elements okay then also it will take k amount of time and if it is a very big number then also it will take k amount of time okay then also it will take k amount of time so over here time complexity time complexity time complexity to access an element access an element an element to access an element is big o of 1 okay it is big o of 1 and that is the reason why arrays are widely used okay why arrays are widely used when we have thousands of records when we have thousands of records at that time uh, finding searching an element by an index by index is very easy so arrays are used for this particular reason the arrays that are there already there in our program okay in our programming language are used so this was about abstract data type and something about arrays that's it for this particular session thank you everyone